All right. Sorry, guys. I, that was kind of crazy. Uh, I don't remember which countdown. It's been a long day. <laughs> so, <laughs> in fact, we don't even have the right background on here, but we'll get that on here in a little bit. Hey, Chad, how you doing? <laughs> Good. How about you, Darren? <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little scattered right days. now. It's, it's yeah. been one of those days. <laughs> oh, it makes it entertaining. It does. So, I mean, hey, we might have some news. We might not have some news. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just try to keep everybody uh, on their toes. But I do know one thing we need to do. We need to uh, throw this a little bit to our sponsors. And yes. once we get back, hopefully we'll get this train back on rails and we'll be able to get going after <laughs> these sponsors. If you'd like to become a patron, click on the Become a Patron link on the front page of the Geocache Talk website or head over to patreon.com forward slash geocache talk for more details. Patrons get the now famous blackout coins and other geocaching items during the year. Support levels start as low as the Bison Tube level, which is only $3 a month. Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook made with genuine right in the rain paper, the logbook's designed for the micro containers of the present and future, geared towards the hider who'd rather go caching than doing cache maintenance. Find them at logwork.com. That's L O G W E R K.com. All right. So, hopefully, as Tom just says, this is going to be an awesome show once it gets going. Very true. Yeah. I hope so, Tom. Uh, so, well, it's going and- now. It's going now, and so it's going to be a lot of fun. And I know we want to do some little bit of catch up. I see. Uh, Adi Olson is in the house from Kansas. Dude, I am so looking forward to seeing you and doing some of your caches out at Mingo uh, next month. Well, hold on. No, it's not quite April yet. May, almost May. a month. Almost, almost there, almost a month. So a month and cannot a week wait to get there, uh, get to beat, meet up with a, a, with you. I um, also see that Tricassius is in the house. So good evening. Uh, just finding our way, another gadget builder um, in here. We know Tom's in here and Houston, Houston, Texas, Dave's in here. And Dave, I'm going to get that stuff out to you hopefully this week uh, for your winning of the, the nano kids challenge for the coin. So I will get that out there hopefully this week. So just, it's been crazy. So, but I just want to welcome everybody in the chat and everything. And uh, what's Tom says, Kansas, uh, Kansas is going to be a blast. So Tom, I guess you're going out as well. That's going to be awesome. Cannot wait to see everybody out there. But we were just oh, at yeah. another event, too, and we had a lot of fun, we're, didn't we, Chad? Oh, yeah. I mean, this is the exciting part. I love events. I love talking to people. And, you know, last month in Texas, being able to actually meet other cashers or see them again, talk and visit, um, you know, and go do caches with people. That That's amazing. That's awesome. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I cash is to visit people. So yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah, that's that's got to be one of my my favorite things too is the community, getting out there, meeting people, talking, getting new ideas. Uh, another builder, I just see it. DJW House is in the house. So yes. once another builder, that, um, Dave, you're they're, going to Mingo as well. Yeah, they, no. Dave was in Texas. Not going to Mingo. I don't think he's going to Mingo. I think he's oh. undecided, but I don't think he is. Well, if we can twist your arm somehow to get you to Mingo, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, so, and, and I think I didn't get to spend like, a lot of time with Dave out in Texas, and that, I, I regret that. So uh, I think I spent as much time with him as I wanted. Um, him and his wife were doing some traveling around there and visiting friends, and so but we got to go out to dinner and spend a little bit of time with him at one of the events. That's great. Um, yeah, Roomba Cats. We spent a lot of time oh, with him and his wife. That was a, a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun, and we had so much fun going out on that gadget trail with Roomba cats and the team. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was. And obviously I think you, if no one's seen it, you have a video of the gadget trail we did right um, there. So, and kind of what to and what not to do on a gadget trail. Right. And it was, it's a, <laughs> some really creative caches in the way they were done. Um, but it was just really, really great. And I know I've been talking to the cash owners and they're, they've been going out and fixing some of the stuff because cash is on a, um, when you have a mega like that and you have a whole bunch of people coming through and you have, you may have like a hundred fines in a year, but then when you have a hundred fines in a weekend, those, those gadgets got to be checked to make sure everything's okay because that's just a lot of wear and tear in such a short time. Yeah, so, and like you said, I don't think it was the caches that actually had the issue. No. It was lack of description on some of them, um, 
or instruction and uh you know some cheap locks which you right know, i'm and sure they, the and owner they, didn't realize and that was going to happen yeah right and they've gone back and repaired those and they've been working on the description so i mean we've been messaging back and forth um on some different stuff and so that's just really i love that um and there's always no matter what you're building and when you build it and this is something i talk about this week as well there's always room for improvement and always look at how you can make keep those caches maintained out there and that's really great that they did they the for that trail they didn't just put the caches out there and just leave them out there they're going back and maintaining them and i just big kudos on that and and really happy to see them they're really excited that we came through there and we're doing them so i just yeah what what if you get down there and you go check these tr this trail out it's a it's a duck uh it's actually a geo art it was a duck ducktails geo art or something it was a duck geo art and there's some of them are just mysteries and just locations when some of the actual physical caches are actual gadgets so it was just a really cool I, we didn't finish i didn't finish the geo art but i definitely went after the gadgets that were in there right we focused on the gadget side of it so yeah um that was fun that was a lot of fun i do it but, again oh oh yeah most definitely most definitely and got some really there was one that i really liked i liked the phone dial one and yeah, I'm I've not of, seen that one before. Never seen that. And I'm really thinking of a way, a different, taking kind of that concept and coming up with some different, another way of doing it. Um, they sent me pictures of what it looks like on the inside and how it works. Um, but I've got, I'm thinking of some, a little bit of my own little twist on it. And that's what I love, um, <laughs> loves about it. Sorry. Um, it says Tom plays yeah, with I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> So, and we got um, from, I uh, believe that's New Zealand or is that Australia's flag? I think it's Australia's I flag. I think it's New Zealand. Is it? Well, okay. somebody from the other side of, I don't know. So, it's somebody from tomorrow. I know that. So yeah, you're probably right. It's probably Australia. I've never yeah. read it that stuff. So, <laughs> but uh, welcome. Uh, GT Buzz, welcome as well. Awesome to see you guys here. Um, so, oh, nice. that's what this in the, in the Tom plays with ducks. That's really what the series was named for. Okay, got it. Oh, Thanks, was it Tom. really? Oh, I thought he was just messing with us. He probably is just messing oh, with us. He's trying to be just, funny. He is. He's trying to be. So, <laughs> but all right. So let's go ahead and jump into what we're talking about tonight because we're at events. We got events are starting to open up in different places. Um, I did see. And I don't know if you want to call this breaking news or not, but it was, I'm part of the seeing Mingo, not Mingo Madness. That's the other one, but going caching. The, the cash page is supposed to be coming out in the next week or so. Uh, they got approval from Georgia and the city to be able to go ahead and go with it. So going caching 2021 is going to happen by what, as of right now, and they are finishing up the cash page to put that out. So once again, another great event coming up. Um, I, I would have to say, I think that's the best event I've ever been to. Um, it, it was great. It's it a was, blast. So. It was so much fun. Um, so this as year's theme is what roaring twenties. Yes. I think is like that. Right? Yes. So yes. you got to go dressed. Yeah. I mean, what other event has a escape room cosplay, a play. I mean, it's just, it's just one of those great events. And that's what we want to talk about when we go to events. What are some of the things that we can take to events that others can do and have fun and maybe discover something when they do it. And so Chad's always done a really great job of these. Uh, I have one that you've given me and then I have a couple of low tech ones that, that I'll kind of show a little bit. And then you have some other ones. So why don't we go ahead and you wanted to talk about how you build these. So, yeah. So I'll just go over a little bit on how, how I build mine. Now you don't have to build them the way I build mine. Um, the whole point of this is so that when you go to an event, instead of just showing someone you're trackable or giving them the number for them to discover you, is to to uh, make it a little more entertaining, more interactive, and make them actually do some work to discover you rather than just give over the code. So, uh, and then you know, watch some people uh, struggle trying to discover you're trackable. So, um, I like to do mine in the uh, Pelican type boxes. 
Um, but you can do it in, in anything you want. Um, you know, uh, whatever you find that can open, it doesn't have to open. It could be an ammo can, it could be a birdhouse. As long as it gives some kind of a code, it doesn't have to be high tech. Um, it could be low tech, which I think Derek has a couple of those he's going to show uh, on there. So just to get started on these, um, and if you've seen me at events and, and you've seen them, I actually did not have them out. I had four with me or four or five in Texas, and I didn't bring them out too often. Uh, but I did it a couple a couple events, and some people discovered them there. And I guess before I build them, I could show you some of them. Um, this is one here called Crack the Code. My camera is is that blurry to you, or is that just me? It's a little. It's a little. Yeah, it's okay though. <laughs> <laughs> is it okay? Is yeah, this better. Okay, why don't you we switch to that? Case? Switch. Oh, wrong one. There there we, we go. go. No worry. Um, so this one here is just a crack the code one. Um, really fun to do. You know, the caster turns it on. I don't have the batteries in it. Um, but they turn it on, do the puzzle, enter the code, and it would actually give them the tracking number here on the screen, the trackable number to discover the box. And so each of my boxes are labeled by numbers. Um, and I have over 30 of them, just over 30 that you can discover. Oh, just 30? Just 30? Yeah. I've been doing a podcast. I have no time to build anything. So, <laughs> well, you have a lot more really than lazy. I do. <laughs> so um, I put a couple of them out here. So that's a crack the code. Um, this is a crack the safe. Same okay. type of thing. Got to uh, do the puzzle. Um, enter the, the safe combination, and it will give you the trackable number. One. That's really cool. Because you, you helped me build... My first one, which was the crack the code one. Um, I got to go back and actually redo some stuff in it now that I've gotten a little bit more familiar with some stuff because mm -hmm. it has not held together at all. But then that's just my lack of skill at the time when I was learning how to do it. I didn't have the right, uh, as we've done the ammo can inserts, I didn't have the right solvent. I didn't, there was a lot of stuff I didn't have the right stuff of. And now I do. So I just need to go back and, and fix that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You learn I, you, some of my first. I could probably grab some of my first ones that I don't like to show. Um, <laughs> this is a, a trivia one. One thing I hate about these buttons is the letters always turn. I got to figure out a way to make them stay straight. But this is one where you got to actually answer twenty questions correctly without getting five wrong, and it will give you a trackable number. And it's a huge trivia game that it goes through, and you have to read the answers and, and answer them correctly. Um, this this one here takes between 45 minutes to an hour and a half is typically what it takes people to complete. And it's better done wow. in a group. Yeah, so, and, I, and I did see that one out at Texas as you were – um, some people were working through it. And that was really cool. Um, really like that. Yeah. So, and speaking of Texas and Dave, his – the one that he had where you just kind of turned over and it beeped out a code. Yes. That. That one. Oh, that was so cool. It's like if you've ever seen – a bop it type thing. That's what you had to turn at a certain time. And then you turn it left, flipped it over, had to go different, different as rotates different ways. And he had to do so many rotations to get it right. Your son was phenomenal do, at it. <laughs> oh yeah. I can't believe that. That's, that was crazy. So the one you're referring to is actually right here. Oh, you have it is. I have the innards. Oh, well. for it so but it works <laughs> um if i put a battery in it uh but i am working with dave on that to make a tesla rack cube in a box and so you actually the tesla the cube the box will be the cube and you gotta right. do so many things it'll be about a code and you enter the code in the box to get the trackable number oh that's i don't so think cool. i'll have it done before mingo but um it will be at some point done. Oh, just Here. finding our way said use the square switches. Yeah, so the sw uh, square buttons, square buttons on your round one that you're having issues with. Oh, <laughs> so they don't turn. Yes. <laughs> well, you want me to be smart about that? Yeah. I don't have a I don't have a I don't I'm sorry, but I don't have a square drill bit. Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, I have a machine that does it. Yeah, so this is more it. And you can hear it beep. Oh, that's the wrong way. So you got to go back to center, which I don't, on this, I don't remember which way it is. 
Dave's probably on. He's probably going, oh, you're doing that completely wrong. Anyways, you got to turn this board. He has a, set, a switch in it here. Uh, and he can probably tell us exactly what it's called uh, in there. And when you turn it a certain direction, anyways, it will beep. It'll tell you if you're right or wrong. And you got to start over. The cube has def different references on each side. Okay. Uh, of it, so you don't lose your direction, which was very helpful. If it was just a plain cube, you wouldn't know which side you went to on there. So, anyway. yeah, that's that was a bad that was a bad example. Well, no, but, but it's but like we're always trying to think of different ways and working on different stuff. Um, <laughs> Dave says it sounds like it powered off. Oh, is that what it sounds like? Yeah, that's yeah. what Dave was saying. So, but Dave. I saw when he was actually designing this and, and kind of playing around with it. It was just, it was one of those things. It's like, that is just so cool. Um, it has a, and so he says it has an ex acceler accelerometer gyro in it is how it tells which way it's going which, when it's rotating. Which way it's facing. Yeah. Rotating. That's really cool. So hopefully um, if Dave will allow us, we'll, we can show how it works on the, on one of the podcasts here coming up. So, but that, so, that was a blast. That would get, if you put that out as a cash, that would get a ton of favorites. Oh, oh yeah. Any of, any, any of these, if we put a lot of these out, they would get a ton of favorites, except they would end up probably disappearing. And that's what sometimes scares me about some of the Arduino ones, unless they're nailed yeah. to a tree, which sorry, you're not supposed to nail them to a tree. Uh, but if they are <laughs> set somehow locked to something, there it's going to be dis disappear and that's why these are really cool to take to events so like right. the one that you gave me ouch is the scanning around one and um so it's a scanning around one it turns on and it has these <laughs> sorry it's got stuck it has these rfid cards and of course that was the wrong one and then that was the right one and then that's the wrong one. Then so you have to start back off at the beginning card again, and you got to work through. I think it's like seven cards to get it right. I had this out when we were when I was at uh, um, what was it called? It was the we we're at the I'm brewery Texas, event right? at the Texas event at um, Geo Woodstock, and this was just so much fun. I could hear this across the room as people were doing this, and this was I was so excited to get this. And once you get it right, it'll gives the trackable code that comes across here on the screen and it's just a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of noise. It's noisy, but it's a lot of fun. And, and I actually have the original batteries in here still, Chad. Well, so, you might want to shut it off then if you want to keep them. Yeah. yeah. I know. Well, I can always open it back up. And fix it, <laughs> Sorry. <but>. <laughs> I <laughs> noticed that. Um, so, I have the, this at the box I was going to show next, but yours is better. Uh, this is the exact same thing. Um, I built this, I think, right after yours. The only thing I added was actually a holder for the cards. Yeah, and I like yeah. that. That's so, really cool. I like the holder. Yeah. So that's a few. I have a whole bunch more, but those are the most popular ones um, that I have uh, here. So anyways, it doesn't have to be anything special, but no. I'll show you how to how I make mine. Let's see if my camera will catch up. All right, I'm going to go to – there we go. Clear. That looks better. I got it. Um, so I'm just going to show you how I do it in one of these Harbor Freight, uh, boxes here. So, um, this is one that I actually recycled it. This was the original, um, uh, trivia game. So, uh, but anyways, it's going to be a new cache or a new puzzle box. Uh, so how I started out is, uh, go to Harbor Freight and buy it. Of course, you can get them if you can get the coupon. You get them for right around nine dollars, so uh, yeah, which is not great. too bad. No, those Pelican uh, cases are expensive, so yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. So, and then if you know me, I like acrylic. So this is one of the first ones I did. I don't have the newer style or the the aluminum one out here, but all I did was cut a square piece of acrylic, uh, measured the distance I want, glued a side onto it, glued a couple ears onto it here. And then I threaded the acrylic uh, in there, which is not the best thing to do. Um, if I'm taking it on and off myself, I'm pretty gentle and it, it lasts. But um, I've sent some out to events where they must have used like a drill or screwdriver, <laughs> like a screwdriver on it. And they were all stripped out, which is my fault. I mean, you shouldn't, acrylic's not made to be 
to hold threads. Right. So once you have this built, the, the, the reason why I did it this way is now it gives you plenty of room to put your electronics. Um, remember here just a few um, weeks ago, we went over this. Um, you can build it right on one of these sheets or you can put your standoffs right under the acrylic and have it all mounted in there. So it's not going to move right. um, with your battery system, everything uh, in, in the bottom of it. And that's why I like to have a nice solid bottom just so everything can mount to it. Then you put it in here in your box and then you cut a top. So I have, I cut, I have tons of tops. I cut for my, and so you, once you find the top you want, I leave it clear. This is a blank one here. So we'll start with this one. And you can see um, on these, this one here was cut. These other ones were cut on the CNC machine. Um, this was cut just on a table saw. And to get the corners, the rounded, all I did was, if you can see it, I just took it on my sand and put a 45 on it. Oh, okay. Just a quick hit on it. And it works perfect. Um so then put this in, and this is probably one that I cut this on my saw. Yeah, that example. <laughs> <laughs> Need to cut it again. Um, I just had one of these in here. The problem with these Harbor Freight boxes is the way they're molded, there's nothing straight on them. Right. So it curves in. This will push it out. But uh, anyways, put this on. There it um, goes. And then you can see where you want you. Yeah, that popped in. You can see where you want your screw holes. You can you can put a, a dot with a sharpie to drill your holes. What I would say before you do that is, in the very bottom of the box, I drilled out, put a screw through here, through the bottom, right. through the legs, um, and into the bottom of your your holder here, or your support, your mount, whatever you want to call it. And then mount this first and then do your top. Because if you do your top and then you mount this, well, I it guess if the top off. was screwed in, it would be okay, but I think it'd be off. I'd do the bottom first. Yeah, it could be off just a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So put that in, do your dots, cut it. You can kind of see this one was made for the acrylics in the way, but I actually run the ears the opposite way. And my new ones are aluminum actually, and I just bend the aluminum ears. And then you saw that, um, the uh, the threaded rivets. You right. can thread the rivet, put the threaded rivets in the ears, and then you don't have to worry about anybody stripping them out. Right. All right. Uh, GC uh, D SK eleven. Um, they're called Pelican boxes, and you can pick them up at Harbor Freight. It's probably the cheaper place that you can find them. Um, but yeah, you can find Pelican cases on Amazon, but you're going to find them a lot cheaper at Harbor Freight, especially when you're able to use the coupon. So that's what those are. Yeah, these are actually called Apache cases. They're okay. Pelican case is what we would call them. It's the a Pelican knockoff case, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. So I don't want you to go to Harbor Freight and ask for a Pelican. Well, they'd probably show you that. But. Right, and and Harbor Freight is not a sponsor. We wish they were, but they are not oh, a sponsor. <laughs> um, you don't have to use one of those if you don't want to. Um, you can actually. Um, I picked this up at Goodwill the other day for three bucks. Oh, wow. And this works just great. There's nothing in it, but that will work perfect. And I like how the DeWalt is actually not molded into it, so I can actually paint over it really nicely. Um, the other options for containers, because my whole thought is I don't want to have it too big um, for people to find. You know, I want to be able to carry it in my backpack. So why not a small one? Right, and I was thinking I've seen somebody make a a Simon game with one of those. Before. Yes, um, exactly. Uh, so here's one I did as well. Oh, that, that's this actually, nice. This plugs in. This is actually rechargeable. See, I'm out of the screen here. This one's actually you plug it into the wall and it recharges. So you don't actually never have to open it up for the batteries. Um, but uh, anyways, yeah, this one was just one I made. A little bit bigger. Um, the box was off Amazon, and man, I built this two years ago. Um, I actually remember when you were building that. Do you? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think on my Instagram I have it. But um, anyways, I don't remember how much the box is. I don't think it was very expensive. Um, I think the whole point of doing this was trying to keep the cost really low on them. So, you know, I would, I would say it's between 10 and $15. Right. And that one, those right there would be really great because those of us that are traveling to an event and we're jumping on an airplane and we mm -hmm. don't have a lot of the luggage space and all that, we can have these like five of those in a backpack and right. have different codes. And those would be really great to have to be able to discover codes that way. I love that. That's really cool. Yeah. And then I got this one here that I wanted to make one with. And this is the size I think you saw that Simon says in. I think um, so. And so uh, these were not very expensive either. I think these were like six or eight dollars uh, on Amazon. Um, fun little thing, fit in a backpack, fairly easy. But then I found these ones, which are even smaller. And this oh, wow. I really fell in love with. I mean, you could put this in your back pocket. Yeah. Um, probably not as waterproof as the other one, but I actually started building one in here. Oh my gosh. And so. Uh, it's so cute. I, yeah, <laughs> you'd have to push it to keep it powered on. Um, and the screen actually is a different type of screen. So it actually will show designs and stuff. It's actually kind of cool. And anyways, the, the puzzle will be up here. And then the code is, you enter the code here. Right. So this is, this is one I started working on and then. I got distracted. Right. So Burnt Turtles <laughs> asked, does TSA ever stop you guys and ask or pull you into the room? I've actually never flown with any of these. I usually drive to events. Uh, but uh, I fly with them all the time. Yeah, but are they actually in your carry-on? Are they in your... No, um, no, no, I check them. See. We check them. Like I, say, so Jack I get pulled them. over the TSA because you have a bag of uh, path tags or coins. <laughs> and they always, they always have to... Uh, you know, it doesn't scan through it. So it just looks like a big blah in right. there. And so they actually have to go through there and they have to dump them out and go through and make sure there's nothing inside of the, the coins. Right. So, right. Uh, but I hate, I don't want to put my coins in my check-in because if I lose it, then, oh. right. I, I'm at a van. I have nothing. So, right. I mean, um, yeah, that's that, that, that suck. Yeah. Yeah. So, so but yeah, I'm not, not had any issues with it. Uh, if you're worried about it, you can actually, most airports have uh, an area when you're checking in your luggage that you can actually, usually for bigger items uh, or firearms, golf clubs, if you want to have them pre-inspected and then they tape them off that says they've been inspected, you could take them over there and tell them what they are and let them inspect them. Um, and they would sweep them for the, you know, the residue for, you know, explosives and stuff. Uh, and then it would be, your your baggage would be tagged that it's fine. So, okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, good to know. That. That's good to know. I'm not doing it. So um, <laughs> <laughs> one thing I was going to mention, you know, we use a lot of the. Uh, uh, the mounting for the uh, the Arduinos on the inside uh, when you're mounting the uh, Arduinos. Do I not have one here anymore? Oh, when the standoffs or which one? Are you... uh, I'm trying. <laughs> you're talking about the the. Uh, uh, hang on here. Hold on, I may have one. Boards, the turbo board. Oh, the turbo board? I got, board? I got a ton of them. Dave actually just gave me a whole bunch too when I saw him. Um, if you're mounting the terminal boards. Here, I'm there. Okay. There it is. It's, it's up um, there. You, you have, you do your standoffs in there. If you don't want to, if you actually just want to use your jumper wires and not have to solder or put anything in, you can get these little holders. Or if you have a 3D printer, you can print them. And these actually snap inside. These have the standoff holes or to mount them. Oh, okay. And these yeah. actually snap inside. And then you can just run your uh, jumpers right out of the back of it. So, uh, anyways, an idea of doing that. And then. Um, <laughs> I just love how you, you just can, throw it. <laughs> yeah. you, can do, you can do uh, <laughs> LCD screens. Uh, this is a holder form, so they actually kind of sit up at an angle, so people right. can see them rather than have to be right on top of your box. Now, did you three D so, print that? That yeah, looks like it's three D printed. printed. Yeah, I'm gonna have yeah. to get this, the code from you on that one. This is one of the first ones I printed. It looks like junk. So anyway, um, that's that's really cool. And there's just a lot of different ideas that you can do. And I mean, of course, Chad's showing the the high end, high tech kind of ones that you can do. But you can easily simply 
even puzzle boxes, like this is a puzzle box that I actually got for Christmas and I know where it came from because um, I picked it out, but it was from, it was on Amazon <laughs> and it's just another pipe of puzzle box and I'm not going to solve it on air. But I've done it, but I'm trying to remember, I would have to sit here and actually work on it. And as you know, it's from the beginning of the show, it's been one of those days and um, but yeah, you just kind of solve it and there's just, just different moves that you do. It slides and it'll actually come all the way apart and you can have a coin or a trackable in there to be able to be discovered. So that's just another simple way that you don't even have to make it. You can just find a really cool puzzle box. This is one. Um, then. Yeah. It ultimately one, just needs to have a code at some point that you. Right. See. And, or even this, like this dovetail, this is a dovetail puzzle box and um I can get it open, but yeah, I've actually hurt my hand opening this thing before, but it, uh, I may be hitting, well, the there it is, there it is. So you can actually, oh, so then it opens and you'd have maybe a coin in this side or just um, a trackable code or something like that, that they could see. So, like I said, you don't even have to necessarily buy um, or build it yourself. You can have, you can come up with it. And this is just a really cool one. I thought this was really neat. Um, That's actually really cool. I'd love to see someone trying to open that up to discover it. That'd be really yeah, cool. That, that one's really cool. And another one that I've, I've done, um, we've all seen the crypt Texas um, with the different, where you spend it. You know, Dave has, you can find them on Thingiverse where you can print them up on a 3d printer. You can make them with PVC pipe, all that. But I've actually, and I built this a couple of months ago and I've been kind of playing around with it and uh, just kind of a preview. There was a design flaw in it and I fixed it. And that's this week's video on behind the cache, but it's the codex box and I don't have a code on here yet, but you basically you could have them figure out the code and you could even have, they have to work for a path tag or whatever you want them to work for to get into it. But once they solve it, the bottom of it, will actually come out of it. And these are just some of the lower tech ones. So then they could actually get in there and get some path tags, or you could have whatever you want in there at these different events. So this is just some of the really cool ways maybe that you could actually create just a fun. That's this way to video. This. Uh, the build was a couple months ago, but I did a um, kind of a follow-up where I actually um, fixed the design flaw that was in this. Um, been beta I think testing I it. That episode. Well, it was two episodes, and I'll have a link for them in the description uh, this week. So, you yeah, know, but it's just, it was just, it's just a lot of a real fun build. Um, it's still probably one of my favorite, favorite ones because the other thing about this one, I designed this to actually fit inside of an ammo can. So it'll go into an ammo can and they can then they actually get to the logbook. We'll be back in here. So that's so they'll just, pop it out of the ammo can and be able to solve right. it. That's really cool. Right. I missed that so, one. That's an excellent build. Yeah, that one was a lot of fun. I got got to use quite a few toys, uh, two toys with that one to build some stuff on that one. So that one's really cool. Um, I may, I don't know, I'm debating if I want to build more of these and maybe bringing these to events and maybe selling them. I don't know. It's an idea. Let me know in the chat if you'd want to buy one of those. Um, <laughs> so, so did you use hardwood floor on that pre cut hardwood floors or did no, you actually, I I actually I and and rabbit everyone? I, I tongue and grooved it myself. Yeah. That's so, nice. So yeah, it came together really nice. And of course this was kind of the prototype. I think the next one would be a lot nicer, but that one was, that was a lot of fun building that um, really cool, really fun. Um, so now I just got to figure out what the code is going to be to be able to put it in there to, for them to figure out. So I, I like ciphers. So I may have like on the top of the ammo can actually have a cipher on there that they have to figure out what they have to put into it. So we'll see, see what they, what they'll end up being. I don't know yet. So. <laughs> That's cool. You know, one I thought about too, is we did um, a few episodes ago or a while ago, the uh, little voice modules. And yes. uh, you could actually have it tell you the code, right? It doesn't have to read it anywhere. And no. so you could do uh, almost like Dave's little box that you turn. If you turn right. it the right way, it would give you the code. You could do, you have a little thing with a magnet and they had to find somewhere on that little, on the box to activate 
uh, the code. In fact, I have a puzzle box, one of the big ones that I did. Right. That's an RFID one. You got to look inside a little hole to count flashing lights. It has a little eye thing, but you have to scan the card somewhere on the box to get it to activate. And the, the scanning is actually underneath the box. So right. you actually have to look at the box and scan it underneath the bottom of it to get it to, to activate. But little things like that, there's all kinds of things you can do. So uh, Pizza Ninja says, I'll trade you pizza cards for one of those. Is there pizza around Yeah, here? Yeah, for, for this box? Well, I like pizza. I mean, yeah, that would feed my family, but and Curtis would love it, but I don't know about Nikki. So, but yeah, <laughs> that, but yeah that's great. So yeah, these are they're a lot of fun. Um, so, and I see a question in here, and I know this is actually uh, to DJW House asking, or Dave Monroe asking, uh, Dave, what are the dimensions slash grade of your magnets you embed into your 3D printed latches? So in case you didn't see that, Dave, uh, Dan was wondering about that. And I'm That's not a sure. Secret. It may be because I mean, <laughs> he did say he was going to be patenting that thing. So, oh, so, oh, oh sorry, off topic. No, no, this, you're okay because no, hey, that would be actually a really cool. We're always off topic. Yeah, it, this train derails all the time. So, Dave uh, says various, various sizes. Uh, and those are the type of the batteries. I, I have a, a batteries, magnets. So, but no, actually, that box that he that Dave built, where you put in the code and it shoots the little um, little yeah. homemade preform up, that would be so cool to have in an event. This is another one of those puzzle boxes. Mm -hmm. So that was a really that, good design. He did. Oh, that's that amazing. Was just, it was just beautiful. Uh, so I've seen it on the show, but seeing it in person and the quality of it and how he built it is amazing. I don't even know how you did. He have that in Texas. Yeah, he had several. He had a couple of them, I think. I missed it. <laughs> yeah. I was running around talking to too many people, other people at the time, I guess. <laughs> we, so. uh, me and, and Dave and, and Roomba Cats uh, and our wives, our families, we all took off one night and went out to pizza and we were showing all of our stuff off. So um, I think you were filming something at that night or something. But, anyways, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I was. Yeah, I probably was. I think that's. Um, Sierra manager just got on us. Yeah, stay on topic. Yeah. Okay, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know how that how you can derail too. So but yeah, yeah. but just a lot of these different <laughs> now I'm completely off. <laughs> okay, yeah, seriously, so, th this is only one. that football game? <laughs> yeah. Um uh anyways, yeah. So, oh, room of cats is on, Doug. So yeah, oh. I had a blast. Him and his wife and, and Dave's everybody, everybody there was awesome. So it was great to see everybody from the podcast who was there. Right. Great time. And, so, and it was warm. I'm in Seattle and you know it was 70s and 80s there, I think is what it was. A little windy, but uh a little windy? It was <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing I'm so fat, I would have blown away. Yeah. Yeah, it was I'd rather have it windy and warm than windy and cold like it is here all the time. Oh, yeah, that's just, it's horrible. But it was a lot of fun. Um, so why did we want to talk about these kind of puzzle boxes and different uh, things, Chad? So, yeah, we want to talk about these because our challenge for next month is to build one and come on the show and show it off. So uh, we would love to invite anybody that wants to build one. Um, doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be electronic, anything you could think about, then come on to the show and we'll give you time to show it, to talk about it, how you built it, how you thought about it, and kind of show it off. Because, you know, I really like building these things. And um, <laughs> reading Gary's comments. I saw Sorry. it. Dean's Squirrel. still coming um, Sunday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, I, I enjoy uh, – uh, seeing what people build and ideas and all this. So anyways, our challenges for that, have you come on and show it off. Uh, it'll be fun. We have events coming up, you know, events are starting to, to, to get published now. So I think this would be a great way to have people discover you, spend some more time talking to people. If you can, some people don't want to, but um, you know, I, I think it's fun. So I'd love to see other people's stuff. Oh yeah. And, and I see, I, I think they'll have a table at can at Mingo for gadget caches and puzzle boxes and stuff. Right. And there's going to be a gadget panel there. Um, clam. Um, I just sent you a message in, um, 
on YouTube uh, you hit with the question, uh, message me back on Instagram or on Facebook, and I'll help you with that build that you're looking at. So, um, sorry, off topic again. Sorry, Gary. Um, but just saw, I haven't seen Clam in one of our talks before, and I, I sent him a message just right before the show. So I just want to make sure you got that. Um, so, yeah, and I know it's on that panel, I believe, I know I'm on it, you're on it. Uh, I believe uh, RumbaCast is on it. Adi's on it. Adi Olsen is on it. Um, I don't know where there is. Oh, maybe you're talking about Sunday night show. Sorry. I click, I was trying to click off of one and it kicked on the other one. Oh, 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 Mingo oh, Matt, also has a gadget test. Oh no. I know we talked about this last year. Um, that'll be fun. I'll be very interested in seeing what people build. I will be too. That's going to be a lot of fun. I think, I think the way that is that you actually bring a gadget that you've built to the event for it to go through. So I think we need to start an event that people come and you build a cash out of certain parts that we provide you and you can get a group of certain people and you have four hours or whatever to build it. I think we should start an event like that. That goes every year. I think that'd be fun. That would be a lot of fun or take it to other events and have that something during the event. Yeah. Just something, something have like a booth and say, okay, this is, these are your tools you have. We'll, we'll provide the different we'll, okay what do you, arduino here's a basic box here's some latches so the hardest part i think would be that if they needed a saw or they needed that type of aspect to be able to do something so there, there would be a limit of a limit to what they could do unless we it would we'd almost have to be like we have a like a build like a build shop a, an actual mm -hmm. be at an actual shop and have the event and have a gadget event there and then we have to expand I, each year to. I think it'd be fun to see what I'd like to have them. So you can't see what each other build is building. Right. Because I'd like to see the different ideas that people have out of the same material. Right. right. This is what you get. Come up with something. And I'd love to see the different ways that people think and how they come up with things like that. So. Right. And I'm sure some of them would be exactly the same, but how would you know if you didn't see what they were doing? So. Dave says duct tape. Duct tape. Yep. Just do a big roll of duct tape. Big roll wire. of duct tape. Ba ba bale wire, bubble, bubble gum. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you can't fix it with duct tape and baling wire, it's broke. <laughs> so, but actually, you no, know, it would be really cool if we did that event and we would actually do like a live podcast, four hour podcast, kind of like a big, huge thing. And we're going to it and actually talking to the builders as they're building it. So people at home would get to that, that can't be at the event would actually get to be able to see what's going on at the same time. I think Just that like would be like the Lego show that they did what, that yeah. built thing, but I don't like how they can see each other's stuff. I mean, that drives me nuts when they look over and like, oh, they're doing the same thing I'm doing. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. I want it to be completely, uh, and I might be thinking too big for that, you know, where you got to have a big enough right. area with dividers, but right, you know, no screws needed. <laughs> but this was this was like duct tape, uh, Canadian chrome, Canadian chrome. What was the show? Uh, red. The show, the guy's name was Red. He always, always used duct tape. He was a Canadian uh, comedian. The show, oh, I love that show. Um, we ought to come up with a cash that Red, uses a lot. Red Deer, no, not Red Deer. I forget, but I know what you're yeah, talking about. I know who I was. We'll make everything out of duct tape, but yeah, it that would be funny to kind of have a a gadget that's based off of duct tape and how you differently the red green show. Red green Thank you. show. Thank you. Well, that was way off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was such a great, great show. So, uh, but that'd be really fun to have just kind of a duct tape um, thing going on too. I mean, this is give us some ideas what we could do. Cause I think that would be a really fun event that we might be able to do someplace. And even if we had, Kind of, we could even maybe use live stream, do this, and we, because I know there's a show that's on Discovery now that they send them the box, and it's with um, Gary and I were so talking Tim about Allen, the show, it's right? With Tim Allen and, and uh, his other co-host, yeah, from from, from, from Tool from, Time. But Gary says yeah. it's horrible. I haven't had a chance to watch it, but it's right after uh, Oak Island, uh, which was last night. I haven't watched. No, today's to say tonight, tonight, tonight. Tonight, it's on tonight. So um, I haven't watched. Well. I'll watch that later, but 
Um, it's called assembly require uh, some assembly required or something like that. Uh, sounds like Ikea, but, um, but that would be, we could even maybe tune into the person building them as they are live, as we're like right now and use stream yard mm -hmm. somehow. And I mean, I don't know, there's some, there's some ideas that we might be able to do with this. Hey Gary, maybe that's an idea for next year's cash con. Um, so <laughs> That would be really cool. It's like we'd have like Rumba Cats. He'd be building a gadget. We'd have Dave. He'd be building one. And we'd have to. You'd have to use these certain tools, or these certain items, and just be doing some different stuff. Um, Rumba Cats. Uh, evidently, he's going to be building a time machine. Uh, need... Yeah. Well, you already have the flux capacitor uh, back there. Yeah. No. I. You know what? <laughs> so much fun riding around with him for two days, three days. <laughs> Because you hear about all these ideas and things he's building, it's like it's amazing. Uh, so I feel like an amateur. So <laughs> how do you think uh, I feel? <laughs> and I hear he has a video coming out here at some point too. So uh anyway, that will be yeah. fun. So like like we said, your challenge this month. I know we've been kind of derailing all over the place on this, but just talking about events, maybe coming up with some different event ideas. I, I love the idea of a gadget event like that. Um, but yeah, be sure to um, email us and I've got to find the right. So email us your, what you have. So you can send it to gadget talk podcast at gmail.com. Send us the pictures of your build. And if you want to come on um, and talk about your build and walk us through your, your build would absolutely love that. Um, and you can also tag us on Instagram or Facebook at Gadget Talk Podcast and, and just let us see that information and, and follow us there as well. I would absolutely love seeing what you were all building because that's just I think that's just a lot of fun. We, we give ideas and I love seeing how people take out those ideas and just turn them and make them their own. You see Pizza Ninja's uh, suggestion for the name? No, I was just the Pink Monkey. Uh Oh, you could call it a MacGyver up a cash <laughs> contest. That's, that's hard to say, but it is fun. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, this contest this month or for next month will be a for puzzle April. box. Yeah, for April will be a puzzle box, um, which we will be airing right before we go to – Oh, do we have a show in Mingo? No, we have a show right before Mingo, don't we? May 8th. Yeah, we'll be yeah. – we'll, that week, that weekend, that's yeah. – Let's see. What, I leave on Wednesday to head to Mingo to be there Thursday. So I I get there. Let's see, eighth is seventh, eighth seventh. I get there on the sixth. Um, so I'll be leaving on the fifth, and I think the show is on the fourth. So yeah, we'll have a show right. on day four. So we'll talk about it then, and I'll be I'll be packed, to ready to go the next day. So yeah, I'm taking off on Wednesday as well. So. So you know who I, I think would have a lot of fun building one of these puzzle boxes, and I would love to see what he comes up with, and that's Tricasius. Yeah. So I that's see awesome. that he's in the I see him in the chat room right now as well. So um, I'm I'm sorry I'm reading the, the post. So um <laughs> I'm reading this machine bills. <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway, so um that's our challenge for next month. Uh you know, if you have any questions, pictures you want to send as well beforehand or anything you want to show before the show, uh, make sure you send us an email to get to talk podcast at gmail.com um, and uh, ask us any questions. We'll have to send you a link if you want to come on and everything like that. So right. uh, send us, yeah, send us an email. Let us know if you want to participate and you'll be on. So it'll be awesome. Right. Looking forward to it. Right. And if you have questions or anything like that, you can always, um, you can either find myself on Instagram at behind the cash.com or behind the cash. Um, or you can always find Chad at bounce bounce eight on Instagram and you can just message us and ask us that way too. So there's several different ways that you get hold of us. Um, if you have questions or anything, go ahead and reach out to us. We love hearing from any, from you guys and getting to talk to you and seeing what different ideas you're coming up with. And like I said, we sometimes get ideas from, well, not for me, not sometimes I always get ideas from everybody that I talk to. So I just really, I couldn't do what I do without the community. I, that's just, that's yeah. just the truth. Yep. And I noticed I actually have a couple emails to respond to here oh, uh, when I log on tonight. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, and 
I, I see there's some, I've been getting some uh, DMs as well as on here. Oh, I'm sure you do. Rumacast says, ooh, I have some ideas. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And hey, if you can work with someone on it too, that's even better. Yeah. So, I mean, t- I- yeah, that's t- working on it as a group, collab with somebody, go for it. That's just really great. Because, I, I mean, I've collabed with several different people, um, and that's just a lot of fun. So, Hugh, thanks. I know it's been kind of all over the place tonight. Thanks for uh, – I'm glad you enjoyed it tonight. So one more thing before we go. Um, we have May coming up, right? So right. May the 4th, which is our next podcast. Well, who yeah. knew? Oh, oh I'm definitely what not wearing, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not going to be wearing a Gadget Talk shirt unless we come up yeah. with a new one that has – I don't know. AT AT. I have one. I'm sure you do, but like Star Wars. I don't like much stuff with Star Wars, so I don't have many Star Wars things. I have a lot. (laughs) No. (laughs) Um, I'm saying that as I have pit droids and all kinds of crap behind me. Yeah, I know. Uh, (laughs) You got this this huge life size pit droid holding Grogu. Yeah. And then you have his little brother right next in front of him. So this is actually was for my May the 4th. So I have a cache that has a big display case. It's about uh, the cache itself is three foot by three foot. And the display case is two foot by three foot with a big piece of acrylic on it. And the, and then the puzzles down below. And it was actually a holiday cache that was going to change monthly with the theme. Um, but about a year and a half ago, I realized that's too much work to change it monthly. So it's, it doesn't change monthly anymore. But for May the 4th, it's going to have displays in it. And so one of them will be the pit droid will be in there, which he has. And after the May the 4th, he'll probably be in there for about a month. He actually will, will be uh, in a lot of geocaching photos uh, under his own account. Um, the other thing we'll have in there, and this will be swag, is... Uh, grab a pile of them here um a bunch of republic credits oh that's just too cool um some um the bascar the bascar yeah, still i have a whole bunch of those too um and uh where's the other stuff well I see you got signal with the mando helmet oh. back in the back um there'll be a smaller version i am not done with it i'm still putting electronics on of signal frozen carbonite <laughs> in there. Yeah, and then I'll probably throw a signal with the with the helmet in there. So anyways, it'll be kind of a fun cache. So I would love to see other people's ideas for a May the 4th cache as well, what they would do. So that's so for that Tuesday, we're gonna kind of if you can come up with an event style thing, extra points if you make it May the 4th. Because that's actually when we're going to probably be going over these bills. It will be that on that May 4th, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yes, absolutely. So it'll be fun. I'm really looking forward to uh, putting mine out, and I'd love to see what other people do. Yeah, so Tom says printing your own money there. Yeah, but it only I works would. It only works in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. So you can't spend <laughs> <Yes>. it here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I printed a whole bunch of Star Wars stuff. Just having so, fun. So Dan's getting on to me. It's at at. Rhymes with bat. Uh, some people say at, at. Uh, I say at at. Some people say tomato. Some people say tomato. So I don't know. Two each is their own. <laughs> what, what do you say about atst? Atst. Yeah, that, exactly. At, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, oh <laughs> okay. man, Romacast has been working on two May the Fourth caches. We'll show for the, yeah, that's. <laughs> well, come on. I want to see them. So Dan says it's confirmed with Star Wars canon. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, anyway, so um, that is it. Any question you guys have, ideas of builds that you may want in the future, um, that would be amazing if you can give us some ideas or have some, you know, if you want to come on and show us how to build something. You know, we would love to, on. you know, to uh, have listeners come on and uh, show us how you do stuff. Uh, it's tough to come up with some ideas. 
Um, but I will say our next build will be a little bit low tech, um, but it'll be fun. It'll be a good build. But we'll announce that after the next show. Yeah, we'll announce that on Monday. We'll spill the beans next week. Right. What are we doing next week, anyways? We haven't. I don't know if we've even come up with that yet. Oh, it's top secret. Okay. I don't even know. Yes. It's how top secret it is. <laughs> All right. So I guess we'll have that meeting afterwards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, but yeah, just thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, be sure to build one of these event caches, uh, event style discovery boxes, wherever you want to call it. And we'd love to see, see you on the show and telling us and showing us and just having fun with us and on this here, because you know, this show is about your caches, not necessarily ours. And we'd love to, that's what one of the things I love. I love seeing your caches and just taking our ideas that we've kind of tinkered around with. And then you put your own spin to it. So that's what, that's, that's what I, that's why I do what I do. Yes. So. And uh, please hit the like button. If you enjoy the show and subscribe to us um, also become a patron. If you have a chance to, it helps us out quite a bit. Uh, come yep. up with some ideas um sometimes it's not cheap to build everything so right uh, a little bit of money helps and also don't forget to go to chromia print shop and get yes. your gadget talk shirts and coins and you, the easiest way to really define that is actually oh that is so cool uh, is to go to the uh, geocache talk.com and click on the store and that goes right there to the store you can they've got gadget talk shirts they got geocaching with kids shirts the sunday show shirts all those different shirts. Uh, I don't have them up here, but they got face masks. They have a lot of different stuff, decals, all that kind of aspect that you can find there. Um, and then hopefully here pretty soon. Yep. Get your gadget talk face mask. Uh, hopefully here pretty soon. We'll have some of the Simon boxes on there as well. So those are almost ready. Waiting for almost a couple ready. more parts. Almost ready. We're almost there. We that <laughs> was some stuff we talked about in answer. Texas. I know, we, but we did get to talk about it a little bit in Texas. So, but thanks everybody for joining us tonight. And once again, send us your builds that you are doing of these, the challenge for these boxes. Love to see them. So, all right, everybody. Good night. Right. See you next week. Good night. <laughs>